Hello and welcome to everybody on cloud fitness. So in today's video, we are going to see how we can use data flows gen 2 in Microsoft fabric. So I hope you guys are watching all the videos sequentially, as well as you guys are practicing hands on in your own systems as well, because that is very important in order to learn this. So let's move ahead. But before moving ahead, I do recommend all of you guys to connect with me on LinkedIn as well as on Instagram, and I'm going to leave the link in the description box. So let's move ahead and see how we can use data flows in Microsoft Fabric. So you can see here I am in my Fabric workspace that I have been using as part of this particular playlist. I am in the data engineering workspace, and this is the lake house that we have created. So now for the Gen 2, uh, for the data flow, you can directly click on this new symbol over here. In fact, there are multiple ways to uh, go into data flow, but uh, let's proceed from here. We will click on the data flow gen two. Now, the moment I click on data flow gen two, you will see the whole, whole UI. Now, this is nothing, but eventually it's a power query itself that helps you to transform the data. It helps you to clean the data. It helps you to process the data. So if you have data sitting somewhere and you just want to do a little bit of processing, you can go ahead, do it in the power query over here, which is nothing but the data flow. You can take in the data from multiple different sources and you can load the data as well into multiple destinations. This is what we are going to see over here. Now, if you see here, it mentions data flow. You can rename it anything you can say. You can call it as data flow demo or anything that you want. And if you click on get data over here, right, and click on more. Now, the moment you do that, you will see different, different sources. You can click on view more and you will see that there are a number of sources from which you can pick up the data. You can directly upload the data as well. So if you have the data in your system, you can upload it. If you want to have it as a blank table, you can even put in the data manually as well. But here we will go and check the different, different sources. So let's say you have an Excel file, CSV file, PDF, Parquet, SharePoint. From all of these sources, you can add the data. Similarly, from multiple different databases, be it Snowflake, be it your SQL database, everywhere you can check, check different sources. Most of them are already available over here. Similarly, if you want to use Microsoft Fabric, you can go ahead, use the data within the Microsoft Fabric itself. Similarly, if you are want to take the data from the data wars, that's also possible from any kind of Azure service, like your blob storage, your SQL database, from all these different services also you can import the data. Similarly, you can go ahead, check if you have any other data source where you want to, you know, pull in the data from, you can check it, you should be able to. So now in our case, we are going to use the data that we have already loaded into the customer's table in Microsoft Fabric. So that's why I'm going to choose Microsoft Fabric over here and I'm going to select Lake House. Now, this is nothing but the connection that I have to provide. And then let's click on next. So the moment you click on next, you will see that your fabric workspace away is available over here, right? Now in this fabric workspace, you click on the file section over here and you will see that these are the, this is the table that we had created. So now in this case, in order to import the data, I'm going to just tick this particular table, which means I just want to pull in this table and click on create. So what it will do is it will start pulling up the data from this particular uh, location, right? It is going to pull up the data from my fabric workspace, this particular location, it is going to give me the customer's data. Now, if I want to do any kind of data preparation, right, I want to do any kind of uh, you know, I want to add a new column, I want to change the schema, I want to delete columns, you know, uh, I want to change the data types, I want to do joins, all these things, you can go ahead and do it inside the data flow and load it into different destinations. Now this part, if you look at the UI over here, it is nothing but it is pretty same as your visual query or power query. Right, so it's pretty much same as the Power Query itself. I'm not sure why they have named it as Data Flow. In fact, they could have directly called it as Power Query as well. But yeah, so if you look at this, this is the customer's data that we have. Now, 
uh, we can apply different kind of transformations over here. So for example, let me simply click on transform and let's try to put a group by over here. Now I want to put the group by key as let's say country, right? And I just want to count the number of rows by the country, right? And, uh, and let's click on OK. So the moment I do that, you will see that a group by happens and there is a step that gets added over here, right? So if you see on the applied steps, you can see a group by has been added right so like this if you want to add a row you want to remove a row all these things you can actually go ahead and, and apply on the data set right so let's say this is the data set that you have got you can filter the rows if you want to let's say we want to filter the rows where count is uh, let's say where count is equal to three and let's hit okay right so probably we are going to get one row over here which is india Right, so like this, you have also applied a filter over here. Now, this is the transformed data set that you have over here. Now here, the data in itself within the table does not matter, but what matters here is how we can use data flows. So now, if you look at this, you have two views over here. You have a query view, right, which is nothing but a diagrammatic representation, and you also have a tabular data view. So if you go on the right bottom, you will see step, right? So the step is nothing but these are the steps, right? And then there is this view, right? If you look at this, the data view and uh, this particular tabular format is the data view and this particular view is nothing but the diagram view, right? This is the top part is also called as diagram view and then show schema. So if you want to view the schema, you can actually go ahead, view the schema as well. Now again, I'll go back to the data and diagrammatic view. So now if you look at this, right, at the bottom of the query setting, you see something called as data destination. And similarly, you can see add data destination over here. Now let's say this is the output that I, that I have, right? And, and remember that if you want to delete any transformation, you can go ahead and delete it over here as well, right? So let me again, you know, just click on it. Let me add, um, let's, Again, take filter rows itself. Let's go to advanced and we can say that, uh, okay, let's go to the basic itself. We don't want to complicate this and we will simply say, or in fact, let me go to advanced itself and we can simply say where count is equal to two and count is, let's say greater than, okay, this is just, this is just a random, uh, you know, condition. So do not, Think much about the condition over here. Okay, so now you have the filtered rows. Okay, it did not lead to any data. Let me go and recheck the condition over here. Okay, instead of and, let's keep it as or and let's again click on okay over here. Now you will see that you have the countries where the count is greater than or equal to uh, two. So now once you have this, we can go ahead and check the add destination data. Now I want to put this output table at a specified location. I can do that using add data destination over here. I can load it to a warehouse. I can use data explorer. I can use lake house. I can use SQL database. So in our case, we are going to use lake house and the same option you see on the left, uh, on the right side as well to add a data destination. Now, if I click over here, let me click on lake house. And again, you will see that it will ask you for a con connection and let's click on next and it starts validating the connection. Now it's asking you, okay, uh, where you want to store the data. I want to store the data over here. And then I will say, what should be my table's name, right? I let, let, let's call it as aggregated, right? Underscore customers, underscore data flow. So let's call our table with this name and let's click on next, right? Now you will see the moment you do that, it tells you the column mapping, right? This is the country. This is the count. This is the source type. This is your destination type. So it is telling you a kind of a mapping between the source and your target. Now source is nothing, but it's within your power query and target destination is nothing, but where you are going to store. So in this case, it's the lake house and let's click on save setting, right? So the moment we click on save settings, 
After that, what you can do is you can go ahead and publish this power query. But remember that everything is getting auto saved, right? Even if I do, even if I close it, this I have explained in my previous video as well. Even if I close everything from here, still I will be able to see it when I come back because everything is getting auto saved over here. So I hope you understand this and you have watched even the previous videos as well to understand this particular point. So now if I go to my workspace, fabric workspace, right, you will see that the data flow demo has already come up over here, right? There's already a data flow demo. And if I go to lake house, right, you will see that there is no table over here right now, right? Because we have actually asked to add a table, right, in, my, in this particular workspace. Right now, now to do that, we have to publish it. So let's click on publish. You click on this, you can even publish it at a later point of time. You can publish it right now as well. So let's publish it now. And the moment we do that, you will see that it starts publishing, right? The whole, uh, or it starts running it end to end. When we click on publish, it also saves it to a specified table that we have mentioned in the uh, data flow itself. Now you can see that it is running and it might take a minute to do so. So now you guys can see that it has actually refreshed it. And here, uh, by the time this is happening, I, what I'll do is I'll click on these three dots, right? You will see that what you can do is you can edit it. So the moment it is done, this these edit and properties option will be enabled. Okay, it's done. So let me just re-click on it. So if you want to edit it, you want to go back to the data flow, you want to edit it, you can do it here. If you want to export it as a JSON format, you can do that. Similarly, the properties and if you want to view the lineage. So let's say I want to view the lineage. I'll just click on lineage over here and it is going to show me end to end lineage. So what does that mean? So I have taken the data from the lake house and I have created this data flow gen2 demo, right? So like this, it actually, uh, you know, gives you the lineage as well if you want to. Now I'll just go back and I'll again click on these three dots. Similarly, you have something called as refresh history. So if you are, if you want to schedule it, if you want to have a schedule around the refresh, you can put a schedule as well. And again, if you want to edit it, edit the data flow again, you can go back and edit the data flow here as well. So I'll just close this and I'll go to my lake house. Now you can see that this aggregated customer has appeared. Now this table that we have created has appeared here as well. So now let's click on, okay. In fact, it's already open. So now you can see the country and count, right? So this is what we have got as the aggregated table on top of our customers table. So this is how you work with the data flow and this is how exactly data flows help, help you to prepare your data. And you can take the data from multiple source systems. You can load it as well into a few different uh, systems, including the lake house. And uh, this exactly is about your data flows. There's nothing more than this in the data flows. It's all about Power Query over here. So if you're already coming from the Power Query background, it really it's really helpful and it's more of a drag and drop that you have to apply different filters and you know to do the basic transformation stuff so thank you so much for being till here do remember to like share and subscribe to my channel and keep watching keep learning